Lead acid rechargeable batteries are the oldest batteries in existence. They were invented by the French physician Gaston Plante in 1859 and they were the first batteries available for commercial use. In today's video we're doing a first start of the air on my 68 Dodge Charger and we can only do that if we install the lead acid battery that's been on charge for a couple of days. And hopefully it's not too windy and you can hear what I'm saying the battery has been on charge for a couple of days so it should be have enough power in it So today, with it being springtime, I want to see if we can get it fired up for the first time this year, and then it'll be ready to go and enjoy some of this lovely sunshine with. Right, let's go and get some keys. First start of the year for the charger. According to the temperature gauge, it is starting to warm up. So we'll nip outside, check to see if the thermostat's open, and make sure the heat's getting all the way through the engine. Hopefully you can hear me over the top of the engine. Watch out the fan it goes. Now that goes as cool as it should be. It's actually all the cold water's going back into the engine. This one's hot. And the radiator is hot, very hot to the touch. So I can only assume from that, I take from that, that the thermostat's open. The water's been circulating around the entire engine and it's keeping it cool and it's at the right temperature. Now hopefully the weather will stay like this for the next few days. And we might actually be able to fire up again and take it out. sound of a V8 can you? Especially a big block 6.3. I've popped a hole in my radiator hose, my heating hose. Look at that. That's all my antifreeze gone. Well I'm going to leave that to cool down, I can't do anything with that at the minute. Isn't it typical? Just when I'm getting ready to go out and have some fun with it. Oh well, at least it's only antifreeze, it's not petrol. Could have been a lot worse. Right, now it's all cooled down since the leak earlier. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, you can. So there's a big split in the hose there. Obviously that Jubilee clip is ancient. So I'm gonna take that off and then take the other end of that pipe off under there. And we'll go and see if we can get some uh, replacement heater hose. Now I've checked the other ones and all these pipes are actually rock hard. So it looks like they all need replacing. So we'll see if we can get this one off and then we'll nip around and see if we can get some more water hose or heater hose 
and get this all sorted out. All right, now we'll soak this in WD-40. It is moving, even though it looks as bad as it is. one side off. Let's try and get the other side off now. It's one of those horrible spring clips. So let's go get some pliers for that. All right, now let's see if we can get these ones, this one off as well. I just about got it. Put a glove on because this is disintegrating. It's sticky and everything. I haven't, I've managed to get the metal bit the spring clip moved oh there we are right yep you can see where the split is that end's not looking too amazing either i don't suppose the bit you didn't see on camera yesterday was this this is the ballast resistor off the charger and when it got covered in antifreeze it started smoking when you turn it over it looks like that Fortunately, I did have a spare. It turns out this one is a 1.12 ohm ballast resistor. The spare one that I've got is a 0.8. And after further research and speaking to a, someone online with regards to it, it turns out that this was the wrong one for the electronic connection I've got on here. This is more for a points orientated distributor. The 0.8 one I had as a spare works better on the electronic ignition. So hopefully we've got the right one in now. And we'll get it started up and see what happens once the water pipe's on. Now, in case you've never heard one before, the job of a ballast resistor, and they mostly appear on older cars, especially Chrysler or Dodge, um, the job of it is when you put the key in the ignition, turn the engine over, it'll allow a full 12 volts to go at the coil to generate a bigger spark to get the engine running. Once the engine's running and you leave go of the key, it'll control the voltage and it'll reduce it down to somewhere around six volts. Now, when it does this, the only way or the, the byproduct of reducing the voltage down is heat. So the ballast resistor itself will get warm. Sometimes it'll get very hot. That's perfectly normal, nothing to worry about. Now, the reason that you might not have heard about a ballast resistor before is they're mostly related to old cars, especially Dodge, Plymouth, Chrysler, etc. Uh, there were some Mark III Capris when I had mine, it had a ballast resistance wire that ran around the engine bay. Now, if it's just a wire that's in your car and you find it, you can always tell the difference. If you pull the sheathing back, a ballast resistor wire will have silver wire in it, all the rest of the wires in the car, on the engine room, on the wiring room rather, in the car, will be a copper coloured wire, or will be copper wire. So it's mostly old cars that have them, which is why you probably haven't heard of one if you're not used to playing about with old cars. Okay, so it's the next day. I'm back trying to get the charger running again and sort out the split in the heater hose. Now, I did go to my local parts factors uh, shortly after the, uh, the incident happened, but unfortunately, they didn't have any hose pipe or any heater pipe uh, that I could get from them. So I did the right thing, and I ordered about two metres of it from that well-known jungle website. It's the perfect size, so it slides straight over the, uh, the end that I needed to on the firewall of the charger. There's only one slight problem with it. Now I need a bit of hose that size, which isn't initially a problem because obviously I've got plenty of hose, but the problem you have is when you try to bend it to that size, it kinks in the middle, just there. You can see that, that kink there. So that's not really going to work for water flow. Just had a bit of a lifesaver. Uh, a mate of mine has come round and he's given us a, a stainless steel welding rod which I've been able to curl up in the shape of a spring and slide inside one of the other bits of radiator hose or heater hose that I've got. Now, if I can get the light right, if you can see in there, there's like a bit of a coiled bit of rod in there. And on the other side, it's exactly the same. Now, what I've done, I've taken the uh, stainless steel welding rod that he gave me, wrapped it round the bar to get it small enough to slide inside here. and now when you bend this it actually doesn't kink so i'm going to get this on the car and see if this does the job right well that's the pipe on guys sorry for the echo under here uh it's on it's not kinked hopefully it's tight enough the only thing to do now is to fire it up see if it works 
Well, the pipe's on. Car's running again. I'll take in with the camera and let you see what's going on. Let's see if it's still dry, just so you'll not hear me when I go to the engine. So I'll not talk while, it's, while I'm filming the engine bit. So hopefully you saw that on camera there, but it is totally dry around by that pipe where it goes into the firewall on both sides of it. But it was only this far side that was leaking, but there's no leaks at the minute. I'm just waiting for the thermostat to open, the temperature to build up in the radiator and the, all the hoses. And then uh, we'll give it a bit of a rev, see what it works, it works like, see if it still stays dry. And then of course when we're shut off, we'll see if there's any extra pressure that's releasing that uh, causes the leak when we're shut off. But so far guys, fingers crossed, it's working. Right, all the hoses are hot, it's up to temperature, the radiator's hot, top hose is hot, bottom hose is running like it should, thermostat's obviously open, it's still nice and dry over there in the back, nothing leaking, so now all will talk the temperature, I'll shut it off, make sure nothing leaks at the back, and the engine's cooling down. I think we'll make it there guys, I think it might be sorted for now. Right, you might be able to hear me better now, back under the bonnet. It's lovely and warm over under here. The radiator, so hot. Top hose is hot, bottom one's nice and cool, the way it should be. Right, and it looks as though we're still dry around by those pipes. Let me just grab a torch, because it's a bit dim and dark under here. Right, so if you can see, I don't know if you can make out in there, they were nice and dry. Dry around the bottom of there as well. Now previously it was running down that part of the firewall under the blower motor. That's dry, all around here is dry. I can't hear any hissing or any fizzing, so it looks good. Let's stick my fingers under here and see if it is clean and dry. Yeah, that's dry guys. Wow. So that's that little problem solved, hopefully. All it is inside of here, there's a normal stainless steel TIG welding rod. And it's been there, uh, I coiled it up around some threaded bar to make like a spring. Slid it in the side, rounded the edges off so they wouldn't cut through the rubber. And you can feel it there, but it's stopping the pipe from kinking, that's the main thing. So we can still get the water flow going through. Right, well, it's taken a couple of days this time around to get it all sorted, but at least it seems to be fixed for now. For now. Marvellous, isn't it? Right, well, it's uh, very nearly 8 o'clock at night, and I've got loads more stuff to do because I'm supposed to be at a car show tomorrow. Unfortunately, if you can see under the blower motor, there's two wet streaks down there, and when you put your hand at the back of the radiator hose or the heater hose, it's coming out wet. So unfortunately, that hasn't fixed it either. Right, so in order to try and solve the problem of the leak, took the hose off, cleaned all around the pipe, put the hose a little bit further on, moved the Jubilee clip. So hopefully you can see there's a little bit of a bulge there where the, uh, is it the swage line is in the original copper pipe that holds that over it. So hopefully that's going to stop it leaking. The only way to find out though is to fire it up. Right, well as you can hear, it's running again. It looks okay. What I'll do is I'll take you over so you can have a look at it and see, if, make sure it is still dry. You're not able to hear me though, so I'm not going to talk while the camera's under the bonnet. But let's go and have a look, see if it's still dry. you noticed on camera there when it was running it's really hot under here that's dry there's nothing there there's nothing on the firewall now it's up to temperature obviously I'll show it off just to see if as it's cooling down it starts to leak as the pressure eases but uh, there's nothing everything's as dry as a bone 
So I'll leave that for a few minutes while it cools down and then obviously we'll be able to top the antifreeze up that, we've, uh, that I've lost over the last few days or so whilst that's been playing up. Everything else is, uh, is all okay. I'll get the air filter on. If it's still dry tomorrow, I'm calling that a win. If you've watched this one all the way through guys, thanks very much. It really helps support the channel. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video and the trials and tribulations of getting the charger running properly again without, without any, any water leaks, consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching all the way through. I'll leave a link up here to all the previous videos we've done on the charger and uh, that's it for now. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.